May I request Dr. Digambar to present a memento to Dr. Uh, Mr. Shashwat Gupta, Editor-in-Chief of Gomantak Times yes, and Nivedita who are with us. And shortly, maybe in another couple of days, you'll find a lot of articles coming in local newspaper about how to take care of your own heart, how to live 100 years, how to reduce your dose of alcohol and increase your dose of exercise, all that things. So with this re uh, regards, uh, as we have I think we have conclude, almost on a concluding session. That is now to unfold the Vijay Dhwaj. I request Dr. Jay Prakash to Jay Gopal to take over this session. I, it is indeed an honor for uh, me to be here along with the stalwarts in the field of emergency medicine. And then we are very, very glad, at least on behalf of the Indian College of Cardiology, let me express our gratitude also to be partners for your meeting here. Uh, I was actually talking to Dr. Vivek and also some of the members of the uh, emergency team that uh, in a country like India, until unless you, you have a real networking of uh, uh, physicians and the healthcare providers and also train people personnel, I think we will not be able to deliver the goods. Uh, I am actually have taken over a, a huge challenge, task of conducting a national-wide registry and I really can understand the problem which is seen in, in countries like uh, I, come, I come from Kerala where, you know, the standard of healthcare is far superior, STEMI is well, well taken care of. But then heart failure is a major challenge which I'll be talking about, sharing with you some of the data that we have. But then the problem is in a country like India which is very vast and then, you know, inaccessible uh, in terms of healthcare and, and, um, uh, uh, and uh, lack of medical personnel and specialists. So I, I was even inquiring with Dr. Chauhan in Himachal Pradesh what it's like, whether subspecialists are available at the taluk levels and so on and so forth. So I think it's, it's very relevant that you have all the people adequately trained. That's very important, have a very structured course. And in, in fact, I'm very glad to understand that the, the emergency MCARD group is really taking initiatives in this and I wish them all the success. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your blessings. What I call is Ashir Vachan. And ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to the next session. That is a scientific session. Last session. Last session of the day and the show goes on. So you want to stretch at the same place for 37 seconds because I have to start the next session exactly 37 seconds. Okay? Are you all comfortable? Good. That's the spirit. Now we are moving to the next session. The chairpersons for this session are Dr. Vimal Krishnan, Dr. Praveen Agarwal and Dr. S. Mukhopadhyay. I request the chairpersons to kindly take the seat on the dais. Okay, so this is the, the pre-spirit uh, session. As you said, you are uh, repeatedly saying spirit, spirit, spirit. So this is a pre-spirit session. I am, I am hoping that uh, we are going to uh, indulge into some pop after this session. All right. So to begin with the session, we have... Where is it? Where is it? Okay. So we have the, the star of uh, today, Dr. Digambar Nayak today. He is going to talk about eco for emergency physicians. And as you know, the eco is the most important, uh, one of the most important tools in the hands of emergency physicians. And he definitely is going to talk about that. Dr. Digambar. Friends, let's come to eco. We have been spending the whole day with eco today. And I, I, I don't know, how many times I'll keep on repeating eco is required. But yes, I will never get tired to talk about eco. I'll tell you my own sh story just in short. It was 1984 that I did my MD. At that time, eco was not heard of. Being uh, right in top in the university like Bombay, I thought I knew my, uh, my medicine, I knew my cardiology very, very well. At that time, I, used to, uh, I still remember we used to take a ECG strip, practically see for every one, one or two millimeters changes here and there, some STD changes, some axis changes, and used to make a diagnosis and treat the patient. And I had the confidence, yes, I'm treating them perfectly well. It went on for a few years, immediately ECO started coming up, then I went out, learnt ECO myself, then started doing it myself and then I realized, what did I realize? In my so-called confident uh, understanding of ECO, uh, understanding of medicine, 
I was 50% of the time wrong. I had so many CG changes with a normal echo. I had so many patients with a normal echo with a lot of changes in the ECG, right from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy to dilated cardiomyopathy to uh, 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 subendocardial uh, infections and so many things. So today, I believe a physician must not write a prescription without seeing the echo of his patient. Then I took over, then I started moving out and took over. I said, I am going to teach, take this as a subject, and I'm going to move out and teach eco to physicians in the country. I moved out into quite a lot of states. I, I think I must have crossed almost somewhere very close to about a thousand physicians who, whom I have spent time, my own money and time, and taught them eco. Then after three or four years, I just went to analyze what did I do. I was shocked to see hardly 10% of them were practicing eco. Then I said, I wasted my money, I wasted my time. It's not worth it. But I didn't give up the cause. I sat down with it. Then what I created was, I said, let's do something different. We have tele-MRI here. We have tele-CT scan. We do not have tele-eco here. Tele-ECG has been started. We do not have tele-eco here. It, it's not, it, it's very, it was very, very difficult. So it took me almost three years of sitting with the engineers to do that software. At the end of it, we created a lovely software to the extent you can do, even in the remotest part of the country, you can do an eco. You can just beam it to us and you will get a very high qualified report with a signature of a good echocardiographer to you. So you can give this echo to all your patients now. It can be taken to the periphery of the country. And I'm sure this is going to benefit your patient for giving you that perfect diagnosis. Okay? So with that, let's go to the talk. Talk is supposed to be the importance of echocardiography for an emergency physician. And I, I just have 20 minutes. Let me quickly go through it. And let's see what we get. Point of care ultrasound. This is a new concept which is devel developing. Anywhere when you are taking care of the patient, you should do an echo. Okay. You need an echo in your ER room, in your casualty department, in your ICU, in your operation theater, ultrasound, everywhere. You need an echo for an intensivist, for an anesthetist, for a casualty doctor, for a general physician, and for an emergency specialist. What do, what do you do by this? Once you put your probe on the patient, your chances of knowing your, K, uh, your case is very, very well. It will give you the diagnosis. It will give you a right way to manage your patient. It's not just your heart that your ultrasound machine works. Your heart, today itself we had a beautiful workshop on ultrasound of the lung. How do you look at your lung? Vascular, DVT, PAD, abdominal screening, procedural guidance, serial assessment. In fact, any condition, any patient that you have, you must be able to put your ultrasound probe on the patient and give a, a solidity or consolidation to your um, diagnosis. Today, ECHO has grown so well. That is right from pediatric ECHO, adult ECHO, pediatric ECHO, stress ECHO, your transthoracic ECHO, transesophageal, ECHO in cancer patient. All cancer drugs damage the heart. We need to, when we are giving a chemotherapy, we need to follow them prior to giving chemotherapy and after each chemotherapy dose so that especially the diastolic dysfunction has to be taken care of. If it is damaged or if it is worsened, I would prefer to postpone the dose till it improves. Otherwise, in the long run, what happens by the time patient finishes his chemotherapy, he comes to us with a heart failure. 
and a diastolic heart failure which was not controlled over the whole uh, uh, spectrum of chemotherapy, you have cut, you have cured his cancer, but cut his life short for, so far as the heart is concerned. In US now, there is a separate department of echocardiography which says echocardiography in cancer patient. Okay, so that, this is what we have to understand this, okay? So you, you, today you can use your uh, ultrasound in your ab abdomin for abdominal uh, patient, for your testicular, for your uh, obstetric patients, musculoskeletal, oculo, ocular dye. I'll tell you what made me that excited in my life. I, I just bought my eco machine almost, I think, long back now, th almost, almost 30 years back. I think I've completed my 40 years of my active practice in medicine. At that time, one, e one evening, one just a young patient was brought to me, feeling giddy. I saw the BP, BP, I was just about to leave the, the hospital, saw the BP was hardly 80 systolic, young patient, no other complaint. As I was examining as, and I was touching her, when I touched her finger, uh, abdomen, she said, Dr. Sab, Duktai, I'm getting pain there. I had the probe. That was a small eco machine, Logic 100. I took the probe, put it there. I could see a lot of this filled with fluid. And I could feel that fluid was thick, so it was blood. I went down, and I could see the bleeding point coming up. Immediately, I sent the patient's urine for a pregnancy test directed the patient to go to operation theater, called the operating team, called the gynecologist. In 15 minutes, everybody was there, and this patient was saved without any further even blood transfusion. One simple thing, one life was saved. And all of us have this instrument in our hand. Can you imagine the amount of lives that you are going to save? I'm telling you this is unbelievable. After that, I never looked back. Even right now in my OPD, I keep three ultrasound units, three ultrasound very high-end units. I don't compromise there. Every patient, I use it more than, than my stethoscope. I have one screening patient, the patient comes, I do an ultrasound, send it, and then whenever I need a detailed ultrasound, I send them to a separate room where the technician helps me to spend the time and do a very detailed ultrasound. So that, for me, um, the friends, is the importance of ultrasound. In any case, wherever you have a, a problem, you can always call an expert. A an expert will take a time to come. In life-threatening thre hemodynamic failure, what helps you in all this condition, my friends, is an eco probe in your hand. Almost in all the cases, you will make the right diagnosis. I just have a few pictures. I don't think I've got much uh, time to show you all these things, a normal eco. Mitral regurgitation, a reduction in global function. You know this is cardiogenic shock. This is, this is your uh, anterior wall infarction. See the dilated LV which is hypocontractile. Such diagnosis is so simple. You, 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 you see the septum, the way it is contracting. I think I'll quickly go through, I don't have much time. You, you, you see a dying heart with pericardial effusion. Categorize this, so many times you have a patient in shock. How will you categorize? One echo will almost always give you your diagnosis, whether it's hypovolemic, distributive, cardiogenic, or obstructive shock. Here is a massive pleural effusion with pericardial effusion and a compressed heart. 
hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Today morning, we just got some volunteers, and for the first volunteer was a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patient. Yes, first patient that I took, and then he went for the others. And he had never known about it. Tamponade. So when, you, when we talk about one diagnosis, you have a, a cardiac arrest. What can you do about when you have a patient of cardiac arrest if you don't have an echo with you? Thoracic sonography, we have pneumothorax, interstitial lung syndrome, consolidation, pleural effusion, and a host of things. I know there was a time when we used to say the lung, air, and the bone are the uh, enemies of ultrasound. If you look at the first Fig Figenbaum um, uh, books, even later on, five to six years back, they said, no, we cannot, uh, 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 in a lung, you cannot do an ultrasound. Uh, with air, you cannot do an ultrasound. On a bone, you cannot do an ultrasound. Today, your lung ultrasound will give you more, much more information than what an X-ray chest will give you. I'll just go through this. Tension pneumothorax. Cardiogenic shock, patient is in failure. DVT. How many times we were missing DVT? Today, it's a routine thing, and if you understand, if you suspect, and if you confirm DVT and pulmonary embolism, you know you will always save this patient. Abdominal ultrasound. There was a time when we were taught abdominal, abdomen is a magic box where you do not make a diagnosis unless you open. Today, the easiest, most open box is abdomen. The moment you put your probe there, you will always have your diagnosis with you, with all these conditions. Needs twice. Your renal stone. There are lots of slides. Let me go through them quickly. Ultrasound in trauma. There's a hemopericardium and a pericardial clot. Obstetrics we have talked about. Ruptured tubal pregnancy. Testicular torsion, detorsion, such easy way to make your right diagnosis. No blood supply in the testis with affected with little gray scale, scale increment. Musculoskeletal, lots of complex fractures here may cannot be seen on an X-ray. And you'll be able to see them on your ultrasound. Tendon in injury. There's no way to diagnose tendon injury. There's no way to diagnose a ruptured muscle, but your ultrasound. These are tendon injuries. Ocular injury, B scan of the eye. Okay. 
Here is a vitreous hemorrhage. Kidney stone, renal stone. Lung abscess, distended bowels, intestinal obstruction. Lung abscess. Okay, just a slide about this. Okay, about eco, uh, about uh, tele eco. We have worked pretty extensively onto this, and I will be able to give you a, a very refined report on echocardiography. On, on your clinic side, you have your machine. You create images, you create videos, put it into your computer, send them back through the uh, internet. They go into portal, they go into cloud, and through the portal, they go to the doctor, examining doctor, and he is able to give you the report. That quickly, it can, it can happen. You can get an emergency report, you can get a, 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 a report after a few hours, as and when, what you need. So your patient should be able to get a report. Today ECG is that simple. There are two, three companies where you just um, do an ECG. By the time patient dresses up himself, your report is printed, report is signed by a cardiologist is there in front of your hand. Now the same thing will happen to the echo. Over a period of time, this is going to be a very, very easy to tool for all of us. Just to uh, help you understand the details of it, how exactly, it's a huge work. I'm telling you, it's a huge work that we had to perform. And everything is there into this eco. E ECG was a much comparatively lesser work. One minute. Yes, sir. Finish, sir. Okay. So, in short, I just wanted to present in front of you, start picking up the eco. It will be a difficult. Initially, if you can't, don't have a time, take the help of tele-echos. Let the echo be there with your patient. And you will almost always be on a better wicket, on a better track to manage your patient. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Rivam, for an excellent uh, lecture. Just one small question about this tele-echo. Is it a real-time echo or tele-echo or it's a kind of just store it and then send it to you? No, you do the echo, you put it, transfer them to your computer and from there through the internet you send it to the can cloud. Can it be done in real-time? Re no, ro not real-time, you after can you it, finish. Can it be done real-time? It can be done real-time in the second step. First let okay. this go on. Now, now you do it because okay. what has happened at the peripheral level, the internet takes a little longer time to send it. We don't want the patient to be disturbed there. This is stored right now. Do it, you finished it, then send it to, the, to your computer, then put it uh, to the cloud. From the cloud, it goes to the doctor, and from there, you, you get a reverse report back. What is? What is the cost there? Number one, you have no cost in starting this. Number two, if you bring a cardiologist to do an echo, you, today average cost for an echo in the country is 1,500 rupees. And you pay cardiologist minimum 500 rupees. You wait for him to come and he has no time. He comes to you, at that time you have to keep on hang, hanging your patient. So you don't do it on all your patients, though you want to do it on all your patients. Okay? Here, you will pay just 500 rupees to that whole process. This will, there is zero cost to you. The software is put into your computer by the company and it starts working. You pay per echo that you do, you pay just those 500 rupees to the company, to the doctors and to everybody. 
a lot of things are involved. There is a big IT company which ma maintains all this. There is a, a training of your technician, which is again done by the company. There is a cost of the cloud, and the whole process, and the, uh, and the cardiologist will be reporting it with his signature. And all this will come to you for just, the cost will, that will come to you is just 500 rupees when you do an echo and then